Greetings, welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Go. My co-host is always Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. So, Chris, what did you think of this episode? It was kick-ass. Yeah, you know, I felt there was some formulaic thing, but the execution was there. Yeah. <laughs> that space battle oh went my on God. for some time, I and I was very happy with it. I know the, the best way to Jeff's heart is through a space battle. <laughs> so that's what we got. Prolonged here. ship exposure. I'm yeah. totally into that. <laughs> It starts out everybody's in the cargo bay, and mm -hmm. uh, you know Isaac is not on their side. No, even though I suspect he will be. Yes. <laughs> I'm like this. This episode can end one of two ways: Isaac deactivates them, or Isaac destroys them. I yeah. was it's still middle ground there. Yeah, it's kind of a little of both. A little of both. Yeah. Um, that little tie. I mean, like, yeah, he sure. Had a lot to do. He was a hero in the end, but yeah. he was still causing problems. He got Taylor shot. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot to do this episode, though, so yeah. good on good on him, good on the actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were right. I think uh, Prime was the only one with red eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was red and oranges in there. Yeah, there should yeah. be a yellow, you know. Mm-hmm. Get the just get the full traffic light going. Yeah. So yeah, Prime wants basically the reason they're still alive is Prime wants them to lie to everybody mm -hmm. so that they can sneak in closer and blow them up. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, just just minimal resistance. It's sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as a machine, I could have come up with more ideas than that. Because <laughs> it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And also, they didn't detect the signal getting out. Yeah, that was whatever. I know they sent it in yeah. every direction, but mm -hmm. still, you would have thought machine Well, I guess they, 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 yeah, they said that they were trying to make it look like background noise or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, you get the usual, like, oh, like, the shuttle's escaping and our people are dead. Shouldn't the machines be on that right away? Yeah, it should be fairly <laughs> immediate. I like how they bother to talk to each other instead of just you know, yeah. being on that the Wi-Fi or That one guy came into the conference room and just wi fi it at him. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I felt uh, Isaac was definitely tipping his hand a few times there, trying mm -hmm. to save people. Tried he was to, trying pretty hard. Yeah, he tried to save that red shirt from getting spaced. Yeah. Yeah, we got to see that. It's mm -hmm. nice. No, they were they were going pretty hardcore this episode. Like they just blew up that first ship right Captain, away. Captain Marco, all you knew. I was like, I was. I don't know why I keep doing this, but I was. I was hoping somebody like important was going to be on there, like um, like say Admiral Zawa or something, mm -hmm. like somebody you know and you don't want to lose. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, I don't know why I want that. I just like I want I want there to be a little more real consequence. Yeah. Yeah. Like poor Captain Marco, mm -hmm. but yeah. Listen, Marcos. We really have to go, but may I offer you and your crew a 13-button salute? Of course. I understand. Safe travels, Captain. It was cool that they tried the little salute thing, but like, they would have that had seems to... seems a little obvious. They, they like, Isaac to, would know no, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, even if Isaac's on their side, they still would have, like, read the database and everything. Like, mm hmm so Isaac was constructed after the years of slavery had ended, so he's yeah. kind of like an outcast. Yeah, well, we got um, we got the Kalon background there. Like uh, that, that, that was actually pretty hardcore. They they put pain synthesizers into their machines. They want you to like, experience I feel like it. There's a better way to do that. Couldn't you just like delete some of their subroutines? Or put in some extra safeties? No, no, we, we're just gonna torture these machines into submission. Yeah. Uh, I liked uh, I liked the full circle there too at the end where Halsey wanted to like put in some insurances on Isaac. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that'd like, be well, just the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what happened yeah. to him. So you know, we don't want to fall down that same rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. um, I hear you like the Kalon chips. Oh man, they were cool. Yeah, it's like they're with, with their Borg-ish. They got the spheres going, but they got all the. I like the empty space. I like it when the ships have empty space in the middle. I like the Romulan warbirds. I like these spheres. So you enjoy Discovery's little empty space? Yeah, it's got as many. Uh, what about that um, ship in um, Into Darkness? Oh yeah, the real big one. Yeah, that's cool. It's got a hole in it. All right, so yeah. you're, you're pro empty space. I get yeah. it. No. Yeah. Have you ever oozed inside with someone like Yafit? Not inside of someone like Yafit. Okay. <laughs> That just sounds great, <laughs> but it did help him find out how they work. Uh huh. That's a great line too. Yeah. Let me go. Yop it. Let me go. Yop it. Yop it. Help. Yop it. Help me. Help. Yop it. Yop it. Help. 
Oh, oh man, we were wondering if we were going to lose Yaffet there. He oh, was, like, he was I a wasn't mass concerned. I, I knew he was but... burnt, but I wasn't yeah. concerned for losing him. Um, once uh, they took Ty, I was just like, oh yeah, they were going to try and get Isaac to kill Ty. Yeah. And you know, if I was Isaac, I probably would have killed Ty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think gotta maintain like, my cover. Yeah, exactly. Like oh, I didn't out fine for I one. didn't like for one, next snap. Go to move in these sci fi shows lately. Yeah. Um I just didn't think realistically Isaac would be able to do his eye thing, which we didn't even know he could do. I feel like that ugh, I bet if you went back and watched season one there would have been a couple times where that would have been really useful. <laughs> yeah. But um no, like he took out the guards as they stood there. And then even on the bridge, all by himself, just took them all out. No yeah, reaction bang, time bang, bang, whatsoever. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. These are some again, terrible you machines. Think they were machines, yeah, but yeah. no. So that yeah, that's why I figured he would kill Ty because like he got a. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess there's no coming back from that for a, more of a family sci-fi show. Yeah, no, there'd be no way to keep Isaac if he did that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. I can't kill children, Isaac. I'm sorry. Yeah, only only Discovery do we get the, the severed child heads. Uh, so their little skate plan where they take the shuttle out uh, while it's at uh, quantum drive speed mm -hmm. um, should tear a shuttle apart, honestly. Mm -hmm. All the shows, like, shuttles aren't even going that speed and they almost tear apart. <laughs> We've lost control. The atmosphere is just like, you're, you're flying at impulse. And yeah. it's like, oh my god. <laughs> Piloting a shuttle out of the bay while the ship's at quantum speed is incredibly dangerous. How dangerous? On day one of pilot training, they tell you don't ever attempt it. But you've done it before, right? No. No, this would be my first time. Awesome. And uh, I like that they could put all their energy into a, a quantum jump or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just uh, burst it. Yeah. I keep wanting to be like, ah, eh, but wait a minute. Don't we hit the warp 10 thing? And I'm like, wait, <laughs> this is a completely different show yeah. that operates in a completely different rules. Oh, you know. And that doesn't have anything to do with anything. It would be beautiful, though, if one of them just mentions this is like, oh, I had a buddy that like, turned into a lizard because they went too fast. <laughs> That'd just be a... That sounds like something Gordon would say. Yeah, that would be a perfect yeah. orbital line, though. Yeah. That's ridiculous, Corey. Yeah, I like uh, Halsey re recalling the fleet. No, mm -hmm. he he had a decent. Uh, he he totally reminded me from the Admiral in Wolf Three Five Nine. Yeah, so. that whole battle was very. That it felt like what happened at Wolf Three Five Nine that we didn't get to see. Yeah, I was just, just gonna say like we didn't get to see. I say DS Nine was the closest one to where we got to see something of this spectacle. Yeah, that scale. Like we we saw everything and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Krill uh, really did clean up pretty good. Yeah, that was kick ass. Yeah. I was a little worried for a second that they were just going to be like, "Well, your <laughs> fleet's blown up and we're already here." So. Yeah, well, yeah well, when they took out those few heading to Earth, be like, "We might as well just keep going." Guys. <laughs> yeah. like, look, look, a an Avis, Earth. Avis gave us this opportunity. Come yeah, on. yeah. I thought that Avis was really good. Uh, like lots of times when they mention Avis, it's just the actors or whoever saying it. It's just like, yeah, okay, I get it. This one I thought flowed really good, where I believed in Avis. Mm -hmm. Like, they believed it, so yeah. I felt, felt that was improving. Captain, it seems we have a common enemy. I hope that means we can work toward finding a common ground. Avis united our paths for a reason, but only he truly knows why. We did get to see some heavy cruisers, which, you know, I kind of got a bit excited for. Yeah, um, a lot of the time I hate the budget-saving sister ship kind of trope, which... but... You yeah. know what, I think that that actually kind of worked here, you know, the Union's got a, a ship model that they use, and the heavy cruisers were actually a little different, they had some more half to them, a little bulk. Yeah. You know, they're all variations sort of on the thing. Yeah, I was thinking that when I saw, like, all the Union ships, I was just like, man, like, why can't they have some other cool designs? But, you know what, that's Star Trek, like, you know, mm -hmm. I expect that in Star Trek, this is its own little universe, I'm cool with their little variants. Because mm -hmm. um, we have seen one that's, like, almost smaller than the Orville before, too, yeah. so. Yeah, I think the Orville was, like, middle class. Yeah. I think they decided there's smaller ones and there's bigger ones. Well, they couldn't go smaller, because, uh, you know, they gotta be able to put up a good fight, and they they took a lot of damage in this. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, took that, a lot of hits. Got but wrecked. they kept going. Mm -hmm. uh, we even got to see Gordon uh, find a krill fighter, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was fun. It's like, eh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a walk in the park, Kazansky. Yeah, he was out there having a great time. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, you gotta let the pilot pilot. 
Well, when uh, when the Orville scraped against the heavy cruiser that was uh, falling apart, I was just like, Ugh, you <laughs> needed Gordon at the helm there. Yeah, yeah, right. We're missing someone. Yeah. Um, so Captain Dalek of the Krill, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like their relationships are, uh, you know, building. Yeah, we're getting, you know, slowly a little better relationship with the Krill. No Billy Joel involved this time. Yeah, yeah, we, we managed to go without. But yeah, this is sort of two instant instances where we've, you know, really improved how we deal with the Krill. Yeah, well, Avis brought them there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, getting to see the shipyard was pretty sweet. Yeah, that thing was huge. That looked like, um, like almost a battle cruiser from Star Wars or something. I, I, we briefly saw it in the first episode, but it looked way, way more longer shots on it this time. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Ed and Kelly go to bat for Isaac at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? You say a little Jonas Quinn comparison. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, betray their own race, and now they're the only one, they can't go back home. Yeah. You know, uh, shades of Stargate season six, yeah. Admiral, he's all alone now. He has betrayed his home planet to save ours, and if we take him back, I think that he'll help us protect ourselves against another invasion. You got any final thoughts on this one? Final thoughts? The, yeah, this kicked ass. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was good tension, um, awesome effects on the battle scenes. You know, this looked great. Um, if, I guess there was probably some budget saving <laughs> earlier in the in the season or something to make up for this because that was huge and um i'm wondering what they have for the season finale now because this was just mid-season goodies yeah yeah that would have been uh quite the season finale like expectation there um i assume because uh the way claire was talking to isaac that sex is on hold for a while <laughs> yeah forgiveness takes time uh -huh. um yeah there's not to just jump back into it like i get like he betrayed them and they're just like oh like oh you betrayed us so, like what position was he in that he could not do the pattern that he did like yeah he, yeah, he, he was he kind of kind of had to play the you double brought agent. him home yeah like he had to do that yeah so i, I don't even think I mean, was isaac even aware of this whole cleansing possibility to begin with oh well, he was yeah that's the thing he was manufactured after so he might not have been fully affiliated with that idea yeah. um but even if he was like you know he's got his programming but he went against it mm -hmm. you know he was the the hero in the story man like yeah he was the winter soldier <laughs> and we all love the winter soldier so i don't get there being a little hostile towards him because you know he did what was right mm -hmm. yeah he ended up on the right side of things yeah well as always thanks for watching